All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I do hope you lot are doing well, and welcome to today's video, which is a match review of Chelsea's 2-2 draw against Sheffield United in the Premier League at home. Football is a frustrating game, right? And apparently a game of two halves. Sorry this match review's come out a day later, but I did attend the game at Stamford Bridge, um, and often it was a painful watch, but I went with George Benson and Louis Benavente, and we were feeling pretty positive before the match. Check this out. Predictions, boys. George, what you saying? 3-0. 3-0 Chelsea. Getting optimistic. Have you been watching my predictions videos again? No. Because I said the same thing. No. Jan? Tell you what, man, I feel like maybe the over. I know you said you don't think it'll be an issue, but the overlapping centre backs, I feel like it might catch the team out a little bit. I feel like they will score. I'm going to say 3 1 Chelsea. Three goals, though, that's good. Who's yeah. going to score? Uh, well, Tammy will get one, uh, Mason will get one, and the third goal scorer will be someone a bit unpredictable, maybe. Barkley. Maybe. The KO Tamori. No, I was going to say maybe Emerson because he's taken a load of shots, yeah. Emerson, in a minute. So maybe Emerson. I reckon Tamori's going to score a bullet header to make it 1 0 before yeah. half time, then Pulisic's going to get a double. Fucking hell. <laughs> Demonetize me. Can you believe this? <laughs> it's going to be. No, I'm going to put a duck over your face <laughs> and quack you out, mate, I'm telling you. Anyway, we're Which right one? next to Stamford Bridge. We're just going to go there now. Stop him swearing. He does get a bit angry. So yeah, things didn't turn out quite how we hoped they would. Anyway, it was great hanging out with George. Check out the George Benson football channel, the link is in the description. Okay, so this match review is going to be a little bit different. I'm not going to be running through the minute per minute because I wasn't analysing the game so well and taking notes like I usually do. But I'm just going to talk about generally how I think things went essentially and my thoughts moving forward for Chelsea and Frank Lampard. So. Let's bring up the analysis screen. All right, next to me on the graphic, you can see how both teams lined up. Now, let's get into the first half. It was a weird one because Chelsea, as per usual, were carving out a lot of chances. They did concede a couple of chances, but Chelsea did look okay. Obviously, Tammy got two goals, sort of earlier in the half and at the very end of the first half. Now, it wasn't an immaculate performance in that first 45 minutes. But as per usual, Chelsea were carving out the chances. Tammy probably could have had a first half hat trick, actually. And I really liked his two goals in this game because unlike Norwich, the goals he scored at Norwich, he's, they were both, for me, top, top class finishes. And, you know, one was outside the box, the other was on the half volley. It was really two sweet goals. But these two goals were more... Vintage Tammy Abraham, instinctive, slightly scrappy poacher finishes. Now these are the type of goals uh, Chelsea have been crying out for, certainly a goal scorer to convert these type of chances and just put it in the net. You know, Diego Costa scored these type of goals all the time. So really the huge positive and takeaway from this game really is that Tammy does look like he can be that man for Chelsea Football Club. In terms of just player performances in the half, I think Jorginho played pretty well. I think Kovacic played pretty well. We'll talk about the second half in just a minute, but in terms of ball progression and moving forwards, I think Chelsea had a lot of good stuff in that half. It's just certain moments and lapses which just shouldn't happen at this level. Now, it could probably be forgiven because of where Chelsea are in the sort of embryonic stage of Lampard's project. You know, the transfer ban, the youth, whatever, all those excuses that shouldn't really be excuses at this level. But... Generally, there's a lot of positives to take from and I'll sort of bring it home at the end of the video and talk about all that. One frustrating moment for me is Kovacic's run into the box. He is a very good dribbler and ball progressor and you can tell he's been coached by Frank Lampard now because he did it a few times on the Sari, but when he picks up the ball, he drives right into the box and he takes a shot and he just basically pulls it wide. He genuinely really is starting to feel like Mikel, you know, he really can't sh get shots on target. I heard some horrendous stat. But I'm, I'm not going to regurgitate in case it's not true, but the amount of shots he's had on target since he's been at Chelsea, and it, it, it isn't good. <laughs> Still, that doesn't worry me particularly because there does seem to be goal scorers over that 11 now, and especially when Hudson Adoy and Ruben Loftus Cheek come back. So that doesn't worry me, but if he is going to be making those runs into the box, he does need to be able to hit the target eventually. 
But Chelsea go in at half time 2 0 up. Now, maybe they should be 3 0 up with the chances. And in fact, maybe they were lucky not to concede. But it was okay. I was feeling good. I was like, that's lovely. Tammy could even get his hat trick. Maybe he could have done it in the first half. But I felt like, yeah, maybe he'll get a hat trick in the second half. I did feel like Chelsea were going to concede. And Chelsea did concede immediately in the first minute of the second half. Chelsea had kicked off. So Chelsea were in possession. And the ball was immediately turned over. They went down the other end and they just carved us open. And Robertson got his first goal for Sheffield United. Good for him. So for me at this point, this is classic textbook Chelsea this season. It's a tension. It happened with Mane in the Super Cup. I swear it's happened a couple of times before already under Frank's uh, reign at Chelsea. But the second half whistle goes and the... the, 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 the I can't talk. The attention, there's no attention. Concentration lapse. There's an immediate, you know, everyone's head drops. They haven't warmed into the game and the opposition come out and score. It's almost like a thing now. Opposition coaches will be like, right, so when the second, you know, when the second half whistle blows, jump on him because you know what? They won't be ready. And yep, Chelsea concede. And although you think, all right, well, Chelsea have carved loads of chances. This is just a moment where their heads drop and we've seen it before, but they'll get back in the game. Sadly, that's not the case because if you can see the goal that early, the psychological landscape, which is a bit of a pretentious way of saying it, basically the game completely changes. The opposition get confident. Something Lampard's been like voicing before. They get back in the game inside their heads and then Chelsea's heads drop. Chelsea's got a young team and they need the maturity to see games out. 2 0 up at home against Sheffield United. No disrespect for them, they play really interesting football, but at home, your B team should be able to see a, a game out 2-0 up. It's just professionalism. Chelsea do carve out a few chances in this half, and again, Tammy Abraham does get an excellent chance to complete his hat-trick, and he forces a good save from the opposition keeper, which is a bit frustrating, but still, none of this really matters at this point. There's too many problems in the side to sort of highlight little, you know, moments like that and think, oh, Chelsea were unlucky. Now, people critique Frank Lampard for the substitutions because perhaps they weren't inspired. He didn't really have the personnel on the bench to bring in some physicality and see out the game. He brought on Michy Batshuayi for Tammy Abraham, which is fair enough. Maybe Tammy was sort of you know, lagging, losing energy. I didn't really see that from the stadium. He's still making runs, but Lampard in his post-match uh, interview said, yeah, you know, Tammy needed to get some rest essentially and Batshuayi was fresh leg. So that kind of makes sense, I guess. I know people want to see Batshuayi, but he's not going to be match fit. He won't warm into the game that quickly. I didn't think he was going to do anything. He brought on Willian, who's still yet to find his feet in this Chelsea side. Um, I kind of understand why he brought him on. He did a couple of good things in terms of ball progression, but he also did a couple of missed place passes, which made Stamford Bridge <laughs> do one grown in unison. Willian's not really doing himself any favours at the moment. And the interesting substitution was Billy Gilmore. Now I'm a huge fan of Billy Gilmore. He's an excellent technical player. He's very, very talented and he's by all accounts, he's got a superb work ethic and he impresses all the coaches. He was really, really well received at Stamford Bridge. Everyone cheered when he came on, they cheered when he was on the ball, and they cheered when he executed a technical piece of play. So that's great, no one's jumping on the coach in Stamford Bridge. But for me, it does seem like a bit of a naive move. When he explained himself afterwards, Frank Lampard, he says, oh, you know, we needed um, some fresh legs. He was the midfielder right on the bench. Um, you know, put him on. But personally, I have a few reservations about Gilmore anyway. Not because of his talent and skill. He's got all of that in abundance. He's a very slight player. He's very small. He does try to get stuck in, bless him, and he can play in like a few different positions, but he... He just didn't seem like the answer there. When you want to see out a game, you want to, you know, I feel like Frank should have just gone two banks of four and, or maybe play four, five, one, try to frustrate them. You're at home, the opposition have to come out, suddenly playing two open, putting on a really sort of petite midfielder and him just running to the corner. It just seems like it left Chelsea far too wide open. Now, when it comes to the equaliser 2-2, it's just more textbook Chelsea weakness. Now I know it goes under his Zuma own goal when he's taking a lot of flack, some abhorrent horrible abuse on Twitter again which I don't want to talk about because I don't want to be about that for this video. But I don't want to critique Zuma too much, I mean the Sheffield player will feel probably gutted he didn't claim that goal. 
For me, Zuma didn't have a great performance. He won a lot of 50-50s, um, but a few stuff was disappointing. Like A lot of his passes were bad. It basically, there was often good passages of Chelsea play, and he'd misplace a pass or overcook a pass, and it would break down. He was doing his no-nonsense defending when he just kicked the ball out, when maybe he could have kept possession and actually made a pass to progress up the other side of the field. So Zuma wasn't great for me today, but I'm not going to get on his back for that own goal. It's just poor Chelsea defending, tactically, systemically, and as a whole. Okay, I want to switch the graphic to the full-time statistics next to me so you guys can have a little read of that, and I want to talk about a few players. Emerson, again, impressed as much as he could in terms of, you know, defensively he was good, getting up he was good, but no one really shone from that back line. Well, actually, no, that's not true. I think Tomori had a good performance, and he basically probably put a market down. At the moment, a lot of Chelsea fans, if you asked them who do you want your centre-back partnership to be, maybe, I know it might be a bit premature, but a lot of people might be saying Rudiger and Tomori. Now, Tomori was Derby's player of the season last season. For a centre-back, considering they had players like Wilson and Mount in there, for Tomori to win that, that says a lot. He was winning loads of 50-50s, getting up really, really well, and he's got an excellent recovery pace. As for the had a really poor game. I mean, he did do some good stuff in open play in terms of getting forward. I think he won possession back a couple of times, but still, if you look at the amount of times he conceded possession, it's getting kind of dismal now for Azpilicueta and Reese James can't come back soon enough. I think Pulisic was alright. He was a little bit pedestrian. Uh, Barkley, for me, didn't really do anything. Jorginho did have a good game. It was nice to hear Stamford Bridge sing his name again. He's finally being appreciated by the match-going fans, as well as, you know, some people on Twitter. I tweeted out some of the statistics of his performance uh, at the bridge, and I'm going to put that on the screen now on the graphic. But other than that, the game was all about Tammy Abraham. I feel like his thunder was stolen. He had a he was the best player on the pitch for my money. He could have had a first half hat trick. He should have completed his hat trick in the second half. He was running around pressing. He was doing his job incredibly well. It was just everyone else that let him down. Now, if, whether that's individual performances, whether that's the team. Well, I don't know, as a collective, a systemic failure, I'm not sure, but I feel bad for Tammy Abraham because he's doing all he can and he played incredibly well. So a few good individual performances in there, but absolutely a collective failure. All right, that's enough of the analysis screen for the moment. All right, guys, a negative result, two points drops, but there is positives to take from this first segment of the Premier League. Five points out of a possible 12 is Dismal, but I tell you what, Frank Lampard's doing the right thing. He's playing football the right way, and he's implementing just the right amount of youth for my money. So he's playing direct. Chelsea are creating a lot of chances. He's put faith in youth in Mason Mount and Tammy Abraham, which has paid off. And he's finding his way in terms of the back four and midfield, that sort of relationship and the systemic failures that are sort of coming from the lack of perhaps that relationship. I said this on George's channel and I'll say it again, basically these are the sort of things that can be coached out of the team. Chelsea have good squad players, they have a lot, including people like Billy Gilmore, but the, the failures aren't because the players are bad just something's not clicking and it's not working and it's not going to necessarily it's not obligated to work straight away do you know what i mean this is all so new it's the embryonic stage of frank lampard's chelsea so people need to sort of take a moment look at the positives and just hope for the appropriate progression throughout the season and remember probably the most salient point out of all of this is chelsea and that 11 were missing callum hudson adoy ruben loftus cheek N'Golo Kante, Antonio Rudiger, and that's getting more and more looking like it's an important miss, or not someone who's yet to be introduced, Rhys James. So that's five starting 11 players that make that team look a lot better. 2 nil up against Sheffield at home. If you've got N'Golo Kante and Ruben Loftus-Cheek in that midfield, you don't concede silly goals. For my money, if you've got Antonio Rudiger in that centre-back pairing, you don't concede that last set-piece goal. If you don't have Azpilicueta in the right-back position conceding possession so many times, you don't, you don't lose possession so many times and you have a better attacking threat down the right-hand side and as Frank rightly said, he's an option in midfield as well. So, take it all to account, breathe in the context of the situation, 
and just chill. So that's the end of my match review, guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. It is not all doom and gloom. It's the international break now. Relax, watch Ross Barkley, Mason Mount, and some other English players play some boring, friendly games. <laughs> If you've enjoyed the video guys, please do like the video, that helps me out a lot. And why not subscribe to my YouTube channel, and you know, I upload every day so you can keep up with the content. Feel free to follow me on social media at Football Yannick, that is at Football Yannick, and you can find me on both Instagram and Twitter. Alright ladies and gents, I'm going to leave it there. So I'm going to be doing videos over the international break about Chelsea news other football hell maybe even some international football who, who knows you know we'll see what happens but anyway enjoy the football and i'll see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck i'ma get it how i'm living i'ma walk the walk outline my lines i rap through thought body bag the verse outline the chalk in my life seen trouble hustle on the double silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle yo chick like to guzzle bad boy stay in trouble i only love this paper sorry i don't I love me, baby.